Hi, I'm Johan Wiet. I'm an actuary, but my job title is that of Chief Analytics Officer at Greenstone Financial Services. Today I'm doing a short Q&A with data science as the central theme. The video can be seen as a general introduction to some data science topics. The simplest explanation of a data scientist would be someone who connects the dots between the business world and the data world. That is to say someone who is able to extract actionable information from data. This definition can be used to describe roles some actuaries also currently fill. In my opinion, the difference between a data scientist and an actuary working in data analytics relates to the coding, visualization and machine learning skills data scientists deploy which actuaries do not necessarily have. Actuaries, on the other hand, tend to have greater domain experience and generally display more business acumen. Historically, actuaries have also marketed themselves as more insurance focused, whereas data scientists market themselves to all industries and any problem. Some of the best data scientists I've met are those actuaries who have invested in themselves by learning the necessary coding, visualization and machine learning skills. They encapsulate the best attributes of both worlds. The difference between a good data scientist and a great data scientist comes down to creativity. You'll be faced with business problems you've probably never seen before and be forced out of your comfort zone to consider new and innovative solutions. Sometimes one of the trickiest things is just trying to understand what the actual business problem is. It comes down to how creative you can be to get to the best possible business solution. From structuring your data in a certain way, setting up visualizations to improve understanding, to just trying to figure out what the hypothesis is you are trying to test. Good and great data scientists both have exceptional technical and communication skills. But at the end of the day, the difference between them comes down to that creative element of being able to think outside the box. The most common mistake I've seen junior data scientists or analysts make is focusing more on modeling techniques or fitting hyperparameters and less on data when trying to solve a problem. Most of the time should be spent gathering, modifying, checking and trying to understand your data. If you invested the time in modifying and trying to understand the data better, it will yield better results than just trying out a variety of different modeling techniques. The biggest gains I've seen usually comes up when a new data set is added to your modeling file, or you can add some clever attributes. A good model without good data is effectively just an algorithm. When thinking of data science competitions, the one that jumps to mind is Kaggle. Kaggle is a platform for predictive modeling and analytics competitions in which companies and researchers post data and specific problems they wish to solve for. Data scientists from around the world compete to produce the best models for predicting and describing the data. This crowdsourcing approach relies on the fact that there are countless solutions that can be applied to any predictive modeling task. And it's impossible to know at the outset which technique or analyst will be most effective. Participating in Kaggle competitions is a great way to start your data science journey. Not only are you learning through doing, you also learn by seeing what the winning entries did to succeed. Both data and modeling skills are tested. Companies have also used data science competitions to identify and recruit the best talent. Some companies even make winning or placing in Kaggle competitions a prerequisite for the job. A recent survey of nearly 17,000 data scientists rated Python and R as the recommended tools for data science. Python received more than twice the votes than R. Personally, I prefer R to Python, probably because I'm quite comfortable with R and only recently started playing with Python. The most popular algorithms were logistic regression, decision trees and random forest. 
TensorFlow was voted the technology most data scientists wanted to learn. TensorFlow is the deep learning framework from Google which is gaining a lot of popularity due to its power and ease of use. To that same end, more than half of the respondents voted deep learning and neural net as the techniques they wanted to gain more experience in. Techniques and tools are constantly evolving, so the tools and techniques I mentioned may not be as relevant in the future. Deep learning is sometimes referred to as a deep neural network. Essentially deep learning and neural networks are the same. Deep learning just contains a lot more hidden layers in the network structure. That means it is just a very complex neural network. The artificial neural network algorithm was first conceived back in the 1940s. So it's a very old idea. With the advances of computer processing speed and an abundance of data, however, deep learning has become a viable and powerful modeling technique. Deep learning is especially proficient in handling unstructured data. Unstructured data refers to data such as video, image, sound or text data. A company like Google uses these algorithms to tag images on the web when you search certain keywords. For example, searching for dogs would return a lot of dog images not necessarily originally tagged as a dog image by the users. This is Google's deep learning AI automatically tagging the images. Another big advantage of deep learning is that it automatically extracts features by which to classify data, as opposed to most traditional machine learning algorithms which require intense time and effort on the part of analysts. The features it manages to extract are more complex than those handpicked by analysts because of the feature hierarchy possible in a deep net. They are also more flexible and less brittle because the net can continually learn on unsupervised data. It's never too late to start. The median and average ages of the 17,000 respondents to the survey was older than 30, with ages ranging from teens to retirees. Everyone is on a different stage of their data science journey. Some of the best data scientists on Kaggle did not learn the techniques they were using via formal education. It was online materials and tutorials available free of charge, together with participating in data science competitions. The best way to begin would be to pick a tool and an algorithm and do as many tutorials as you can. I suggest trying to understand how the algorithm works as well. Not necessarily the complex maths behind it, but rather the basic building blocks of the algorithm. Quite a few of the machine learning algorithms lend themselves to simple explanations as to how they work. It may take a while to get started, but it won't be long before it becomes a lot easier once you reach a certain level of proficiency with the tool or algorithm you have chosen. You can then move to the next algorithm and continue in your journey. All the best on your own data science journey. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.